what's up everybody if you've been in the channel before welcome back if you're new to the channel hello welcome my name is nikki and i am seriously introverted so first thing i i would say happy august but it's almost over hopefully your august has been better than mine um i will apologize for the lateness of the video it is the 20th and i'm just now recording usually when the video is kind of late or like posted late it's mostly like error on my end i've recorded the video like in the first week of the month but something happens and it doesn't get uploaded in time uh, i did recently learn that my router is dying so my 100 megabyte uh, per second whatever um internet or connection when i download or upload whatever both I think I only get like two to four megabytes per second which is why sometimes a 30 minute video takes like six hours to upload yeah so that's part of it um for like prior for why it's been later in the month because it takes so, so very long to upload this month has been a whirlwind and not really in a good sense so I try not to be like total Debbie Downer, but I have lots of updates and I feel like not a whole lot of them are very good. So, uh, a positive, my mom and I just got back from Kimza at the beginning of this, this week. I think we got back on, today's Saturday, so we got back this last Sunday, the 14th. And, uh, long time viewers of the channel will maybe remember that my mom goes to Kim's every year. She needs to reach her hours and uh, she she's certified paramedic. So she needs 60 hours every two years to keep her certification. And I tend to uh, tag along, I go with. I don't, I don't need any of that, but it's like a little mini vacay. So we just got back from that. Um, there were plans, hopeful plans for what we were gonna do while we were there. And that did not work out. So it was very much needed relaxing vacation on my end to be at Kimza because the weekend prior to us leaving, because we left on the 10th, which was a Wednesday. So the following Friday, which was the weekend I had planned to originally record this video, uh, went to hell in a handbasket. So let's see. The 5th, I guess, would have been that Friday. Well, backtrack here. Let's just lay the big bomb down. The, the vague thing that I have been kind of sort of referring to, but not that I had hoped to do at the end of the year is not happening now. Because of the things that happened a couple weekends ago, which I'll get into in a minute. So, I'm, I'm not, we're not going to be able to do the thing. So, I'll just come out and say it don't matter anymore. I was hoping to be able to go to Disney for Christmas. And everything was set. We had reservations. We were going to buy plane tickets uh, while we were at Kemza. And then it would have been this coming week, I would have been buying my park tickets. Would have been absolute done deal. So we're very much on the everything happens for a reason and all of this happened prior to going to Kimza and prior to the paying for the non-refundable things. So on the 5th, which was that Friday, I was leaving for work. Everything was fine. I passed my brother who had come over to mow the yard because I paid him to do that. And uh, probably about an hour or so into my shift I got a text message that not gonna go into long details but essentially he found a leak in the yard and it's very hot and dry right now august in kansas there's no reason for standing water to be in the yard so city came out looked at the water or like looked at whatever it was determined it was of course my responsibility considering where it was in um respect to the meter 
had the water turned off. My dad was gonna come the next morning on Saturday to dig it up and look at it because he could probably fix it. And then I got home at one, about one o'clock in the morning on Saturday, which would have been like my, the end of my shift on Friday, coming home really early Saturday morning. Walked up on the front porch and heard a really horrendous noise. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff that I carry back and forth, so rather than stand there in the dark, I was like, I'm just gonna go inside, drop my stuff off, grab a flashlight, and then go investigate. But when I unlocked the front door, pushed into the house, I encountered a wall of just heat because my air conditioner quit working again. So any of you had seen my videos prior know that I already fixed the air conditioner at one point. I threw $500 at the air conditioner to fix it in March, May, something like that, beginning of the summer. I had to replace a compressor and uh, refill the Freon. Not cheap. So come inside, drop all the stuff off. Uh, you might have just heard it click on. Uh, you might see it, this white thing right there is my thermostat. Walked to the thermostat and it said 85 degrees in the house. So I grabbed a flashlight, went outside around. I didn't even walk to the air conditioner, I just lit it up. Identified, yes, that is what was making the horrendous noise. Hurried back inside, turned it off. Did not sleep, 85 degrees. That was not a great night's sleep, if you want to call it that. Woke up. Uh, or just got up, I don't even know if I slept truly, at 7, or I was up and around by 7, and I think my dad texted me at some point saying that he'd be, like him and my brother would be over shortly to come dig, and I needed to call somebody if I hadn't already to look at the air conditioner. So at 8 o'clock, I called the guy who fixed it the first time, who was out doing a job and he'd be back later in the morning. So, my dad and brother come over, they're digging, they dig where the uh, city probed for the line. Couldn't find the water pipe, or, yeah, like the water line, and couldn't find the leak. They turned the water back on, turned it off, was looking, trying to find wet ground. Dug down, turned the water back on, and then finally found it in the roots of the tree that's probably 30 years old. It's not 20 years old, I don't know, it's a 25, 30 foot tree. And they weren't gonna be able to dig through the roots to get down to where they needed for the for the line. So we waited for the air conditioner guy to get there because he's, he's heat and plumbing, um, so he could do all of the things. So he took a look at the line, said that he had a backhoe but he wouldn't be able to dig until Monday. And then he took apart my air conditioner, which was the motor that had gone out this time. And my unit is an old unit, so he, he was like, uh, you might uh, be lucky and I might have a motor. If not, I'm gonna have to order it Monday for Tuesday. So he leaves. My dad went and got the camper, like, and brought it over. So I was living in my parents' camper in my driveway for four days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. They fixed the leak, or the water line on Monday. They had to replace a 10 foot section of my, my line. Still 50-50 as to whether that tree is going to survive or not, so that might be an incurring um, bill later, because I might have to pay someone to come take the tree down. We don't know if it'll survive the shock of a three foot deep, 10 foot long trench that got dug through the heart of the roots of that tree. And then instead of Tuesday for the air conditioner getting fixed, um, I guess the motor came in, but the bracket, mounting bracket was different and he had to order a different mounting bracket. So that didn't come in until Wednesday and I had already left town. So I guess I actually slept Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and I was in the wind, so it was like four and a half days I was in the camper. Also, so very 
uh, grateful that I had the camper, but still inconvenient because I was running back and forth between hot house, cooler camper, hot house, cooler camper. Um, so when we left for Kimza on Wednesday, uh, dad came over to oversee the air conditioner fixing and then that got fixed at like 3.30 or something in the afternoon on Wednesday. We'd left at about noon and then we were gone Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Came back Sunday night and that was the first time I'd been in the house in over a week. Or like I got to sleep in my own bed I guess I'll say for over a week. Bills like the bills for this came in on Monday and it was over it was like 1350 so almost $1400 that I had to pay out for all that so there went my entire Disney fund in one go plus the 500 that I paid earlier I, I paid almost two grand in house stuff just in the last four months so I'm not gonna be able to save that much money that quickly in the time frame I need to in order to get to Disney during Christmas. So again, things happen for a reason. So either I, we weren't supposed to go to Disney for Christmas or I had to think we were going in order to save the money that I needed to do the house repairs. So either way, sad, disappointed, I uh, was very upset and really over it um, for a while and wasn't in the correct frame of mind to do any sort of recording. Um, I went back to work and then, uh, yeah, I just came home and slept because I was still pretty upset up until a few days ago where I'm kind of just, it is what it is and we were meant to go, I guess. So, Disney's not going anywhere. We'll get there eventually. I just would have liked to have gone for the 50th. Um, so, oh well. But that's what's going on with me right now. Uh, that's why I say I really hope that your August has been better. That your summer has been good. And I know that some people, kids are starting back up for school. I think our first day of school was a few days ago. Like Wednesday or Thursday, I think. So, but yeah. Um, anyway no more depressing things um it is saturday i've been spending the last i don't even know five and a half hours on uh, watching jesse's merch sell live support the bestie i didn't buy anything i have no money but um i i gave you know thumbs up hearts and and all that participation to push you know just to show i was there so but her live just finished, so now I'm going to do the video. And to the video, um, I'm going to do challenge coins now because all of my outstanding orders are now complete. The ones that I've been waiting for since uh, April showed up two weeks ago, or no, showed up last week, showed up on last Saturday, so a week ago. So I'm now complete and ready. And I can now do the challenge coins because I've been kind of waiting. I wasn't going to do challenge coins this video. I was going to do something else because I didn't have all the coins. So uh, this <laughs> is how I've got them currently in a massive, really big, heavy binder. Um, I used to have, I mean, it's sitting right there, but it was a teeny little um, cabinet, like glass cabinet that you could see the, like the coins through. And I very quickly... Um, outgrew that uh, well let me go grab it and I will show it to you this was the original um, thing that I kept it in so little grooves or a groove or whatever in the um, shelf and then they sat in there and then it would clip shut and then I didn't have it hanging anywhere, I just had it set up or like leaned up against the wall because um, I was constantly adding to it. But I'd gotten so many coins that you couldn't see, like they were so much overlapping each other, you couldn't see any of the coins. So the binder was kind of my backup. 
and I can carry it around a little bit easier and I mean this thing is heavy. Downfall, I've got the uh, like the coin sleeves and I have several coins that are too big um, to fit in the sleeves so I've got them kind of just in the like there's a mesh pouch in here that I have so the binder is not the best solution but it's better than the little cabinet and I don't really have a ton of wall space because you may you may have seen like the big most of the time they're in a flag um, and then the coins sit on those but I mean really they come in whatever size I mean I could get a Mickey head one I could get uh, I could probably get a Harry Potter one I mean you can get any sort of size and shape that you would want to put your coins in they just they're more typically tend to be a flag those are like the more generic ones like for thin blue line thin red line thin gold line silver line all the all the thin thin lines for the military law enforcement EMS corrections dispatch all that so that's usually what you see the coins on Otherwise, you see them on like a, it's like a flat piece of wood, and then they're all sort of knifed in there. Uh, again, I don't have enough space for any of that, so the binder does work um, relatively well for that. Uh, I just buy the more coin pages, and then you can fill it until the thing's full, I guess, or until I can't pick it up. I think this is a four, it's a four or five inch binder, so it is quite large um, I am just going to like I'm gonna flip the camera and set it down and then open it up to see how I've got them in there and then I'm actually gonna take all the pages out so I can turn them over easier I'm not gonna do the coins one by one that would take me forever because I think I have over 100 coins so we'll kind of just do them in a mass um, bulk or just do them by page rather by coin so we'll do fronts and then backs so i'll, I'll have to pull the, the pages and stuff out uh, that's about the only only way that i know to do it with any sort of convenience so let me rearrange and then we'll look at the coins before i pull the sleeves out um i want to see or like show you how i've got the binder set up so these are for like patches I've collected or coins that are too big um, for the coin sleeves. I have um, lots of coin sleeves. You can see there's a lot of them that are blank in there. I've got some extra um, sleeves situated for like coins that I will eventually have made space for them or whatever. And then there is a a strap in here I could carry it cross body if I really wanted to uh, I don't really want to do that but you know just in case um, I will be pulling all of these out and then this up here is all my extra coins so these are like duplicates of the ones that are in here and these are like for trading purposes so I've got them kind of set aside that way if I ever go or I ever make it to a park or um, I'm out and about somewhere I can trade um, I have mostly Disney coins for trade but I do have some random like LEO type coins to trade but those just kind of sit up there um, and then my flat out bear that I didn't move this is super cute um, everybody knows I, I like to read one of my authors um, featured one of these in her book and this is made from uh, I'm trying to think of what it is now it is uh oh it's from Australia shipping was kind of outrageous um, it is here Here's the tag. Is it, is it sheepskin? Yeah, Australian sheepskin. 
So the cool part about it is there's no stuffing. That's why it's called a flat out bear. It is flat. And this thing is super, super soft. It's like kind of ugly, but really cute all at the same time. It's so strange. So anyway, that was random. Um, let me pull all the pages out and then I'll start sifting through because I have to pull some of the coins out that are in here and I'll show you the random patches I have too. Okay. So here are all the pages again. So I'll probably, I'll try to bring them in like as close as I can or maybe I'll just kind of set them off and do one at a time like this. We'll do that instead. So, okay. I kind of, I don't know. I started trying to organize the best I can and then kind of along the way the organization went to eh, did I organize? I don't know. So some of these are official. Most of them are not Disney wise. What I mean by official is like the parks actually do them or they're handed out at the parks. So like the security people at the parks or whatever do them they're not necessarily fan made they're disney actually hands them out for their people to trade i don't have very many of those i know i have for sure one which is this one and then i think these here are official and if that's if these are official then these these uh five right here are the only official coins that I have but I will uh, well official regular Disney coins I do have some official fire Disney coins which we'll get to here in a second so I'll just bring them up closer here uh, the California corrections um, this one was made by Disney Blue Line, so that's the thin gold line for Dispatch. And then the K9 Nomad um, Security Explosive Detective, um, or Detection Coin. Uh, I'll show you the backs, or well, maybe I'll do three at a time and show you the back. So this is the back of the Correction Coin, so now most of you see why I wanted to get it, because it's got the pirate scene with uh, Keith, if you follow Jesse's channel, yeah, Miss Jesse Cherry. Uh, she named him over there. There's the uh, thin gold line, and then um, the back of the Nomad. There are several different versions of this coin. This one has the what they call the trademark which is the Disney. So the non-trademarked one is like the highly sought after one. I was just excited to get one, so it didn't really matter. Uh, Anaheim, another California, and the Honolulu, which is actually the Alani coin. And then that's the back of the uh, California coin. And then Disney for the, uh, um, the other one there. The Anaheim coin. This one's probably one of my favorites. The, so the rest of what's on this page are fan made. They're not official coins. So the Pluto coin. I just really enjoy that. Pluto is my favorite out of those. Um, out of the Sensational Six. So... Service Dog Coin, Captain Shield, which is one of my favorite things, and then Arc Reactor for Iron Man. And then they have the same backs on them, and then the back of the Pluto coin. And then I have like a, I think the Hades parts, the holographic, or whatever you want to call that, um, lithographic whatever it changes the flag ceremony coin and then I got a Loki coin burdened with glorious purpose 
and then the backs of those coins. So I don't know if it's going to show up very well, but he's a little bit lithographic back of the flag retreat, and then Miss Minutes is on the back of the Loki coin. Uh, probably for the rest of them, I'll just show the fronts and then turn around and show the backs so it goes a little bit quicker. Uh, my two... <laughs> the reason there's two of them in here is they are limited. These were fan-made, but they are limited to 100, and I had really low numbers for both of them. I think one's 10 and one's 17, so I put them both in here. I do have two extra ones to uh, to trade, so I'm not too worried about it not to, uh, or like having a duplicate in here. Also, it's just a really good coin because Pluto. Uh, I have more room, as you can tell. Okay, this is actually a Disney movie magic coin. It came from the Disney movie rewards. I do have the box and the certificate of authenticity, so it's not actually a challenge coin. I just put it in here. The travel token that you can get from the buses at Disney I got one of those, maybe not the last trip, but uh, maybe two trips ago. Oh, that's somehow upside down now, but it's a Tiki Trader Sam's, like, support, like a drinking coin. And then this is another, like, Tiki haunted house, like, drinking coin is what they're calling it. Uh, this one's called a Hobo Walt Disney coin. And then the next several coins are made by, uh, this one I think is made by, or these three, I think they're made by, it's called AKA Disney, or AKA Supply I think on Instagram. And then the next ones are, um, I think they're PFAB or something, JFAB on Facebook. I think it's PFAB. So, iridescent tree, uh, animal kingdom coin. And then I have this entire collection except for the uh, Magic Kingdom. There's four Magic Kingdom ones I'm missing. So the collection goes um, silver, gold, rose gold, iridescent in each park. So I'm missing the Magic Kingdom ones all together. So then you've got Animal Kingdom, Silver and Gold. And then we'll do the backs real quick. This one somehow got flipped upside down in there. So the other side says one more, this one says no more. And then Disney Resort. There's your movie magic. Ear distance the same on that side. Castle. Hatbox Ghost says no more. And then all of the PFAB coins have the same back on them, which is the 50th Kingdom, Magic Kingdom logo. And then there's the rose gold iridescent in Animal Kingdom. And then I've got silver gold, rose gold, and iridescent in the um, um, Hollywood Studio coin. Which, apparently moving around in the thing, they get twisted around, but... A uh, cert coin, also again not official. Somebody made those, and then uh, if anybody knows Cantina Ina, I think is what she calls herself. It's I think her name's Ina. She works at uh, Hollywood Studios and she works at Galaxy's Edge. So she creates her own Galaxy Edge coins. This one is version 3. That's why I've left space. There's room for 1, 2, I have 3, I'm missing 4, and I have 5. So, and then again, all of them have the same back, the cert coin, and then the cantina coins all have the same back. 
Um, I have this for the Cantina coin. This was a Kickstarter. I think actually both of them were Kickstarter. So she works there and she's correctly placed because she loves um, Star Wars. Uh, these two were also her coins. These, This is version 5, so this one is actually version 5. And then they created, or she created a chase coin. And I don't know how I managed to get lucky enough to get a chase coin, because I think on the card it says there's only 15 of those made. And I was one of the lucky 15. And then this is a, it's actually a gift card that you can buy at Galaxy's Edge doesn't have anything on it but I put it in there because it looks John coin ish yeah see you can I I could put money on it and use it for like Star Wars credits and then again they have the same back um, the card that came with that one was this she really really likes Kylo Ren <laughs> and then this actually gives you a look of all of the versions so again, I'm missing one and two, I have three, I'm missing four, and I have five. And it tells you, the one that I have, there's a limited edition of 100, and then there was only 15 chasers. And I managed to get one of the chasers. And this was also a Kickstarter. So. Um, that was super cool. Alright, so these are official fire coins for Disney, uh, except for this one. This one's fan made. But this one comes from Reedy Creek, or these two. Reedy Creek, uh, for any Disney fans, they are the official fire station that services uh, Magic Kingdom. Actually, I think they service maybe the entirety of Disney. I know for sure they service uh, Magic Kingdom, but. And then this one was a fan made. And then this is an official Miami Dade um, fire coin. It's on the Disney side for a reason. I'll show you when you see the back. Again, this one is a fan made. And the backs of the Reedy Creek. Reedy Creek tends to be a highly sought after coin. And then. Deadpool, which I thought was awesome. Uh, this is actually a, an official FBI coin, and they use Jiminy Cricket because it is a, um, I call it CVSA, it's a polygraph. So I think Jiminy Cricket was there for a reason for, you know, honesty and let, let your conscience be your guide, truth sort of thing, so kind of an irony there. But this is the official uh, coin for them. I bought it through their, uh, their web page. Alright, a bunch of unofficials. Uh, silver line this time for corrections, which is just a really massive coin. This one's thicker than I thought it was when I got it. Um, the Star Wars version of Sprite and Diet Coke, and then coffee and Disney. A, a Punisher Mickey. Backs of the coffees. And backs of the Diet Coke. Alright, these are my Harry Potter coins. None of these are official. Um, this one came from, again, the AKA Supply. 
these, the next three actually came from uh, Geek Gear. Or actually, no, this one was an independent seller, and the, this one came from Geek Gear. And this one came from Geek Gear. Um, I do have other Harry Potter coins, but they are too big to fit in here, so we will go... I'll do all the, like, the massive coins last, so I can make space for what I need to. Uh, we're going to transition from Disney Harry Potter to, like, my official LEO coins. And these are just from counties that are near me or I know people or I was just able to get them and it looks like they have kind of shuffled around in there. I have a lot of Wichita coins which is what you're going to end up seeing most of. I have people that I know or relatives that I that work in Wichita. Probably one of my favorite coins. It's just so pretty. The mounted police. I do have a patch for this as well that I'll show. Um, this one was a neat one because it has all the disciplines on it. Uh, you don't see very many of like the flags that show all the disciplines, so that's pretty cool. that look weird. I'm getting like a weird glare on my end for some reason. These are sort of my random, either they're corrections or they're, I don't know, just some random LEO ones that I picked up from who knows where. I think some of them might also be like dispatch informational kind of thing. I did get to visit KLETC, which around here is where our uh, like police academy is, and that's actually where these three coins came from, and I thought I had another one, maybe just these three. Yeah. So these came from the KLETC like training, this one from an individual person there, and then these from like the gift shop. APCO is a training thing like that our dispatch people go through. Someone brought me back that coin. That's a corrections, yeah, corrections coin. Page. Okay, these are official, like, these are fire coins in, like, the area, um, like, just 
instead of LEO, they're fire coins. Um, someone I work with gave me that. He retired from this station in the Dallas area, and he um, gave me that because he knew that I collected coins. I bought this at Kim's uh, last year, and then I went to um, one of the firehouses in Goddard and was able to trade for that. My random military coins. Most of these I've purchased. This is, I just got it based on like series that I like to read. Uh, it goes back to the same author that um, introduced me to the Flat Out Bear. Her name's Susan Stoker, if anybody likes military uh, romance books. But she has a lot of Delta Force um, people. Um, this one was given to me by the same co-worker that worked at the Grand Prairie station. I guess his son or something brought this back because he worked at this on this submarine. And then my great uncle uh, used to fly these for the military before he retired. I just got this one. These two I just bought either off Etsy or eBay or something. Um, I got coins. I think it was the Wichita PD K9 coin. And it turned out that I got them from a guy that he has a YouTube channel call for this, the test it, and he, him and a friend, I guess, drink scotch, and he make coins, so I got one of those. I traded a coin with a postal inspector from Leewood, which is in, like, the Kansas City area, and then I subscribed to BattleBox, so they have a challenge coin for BattleBox that... I needed because, you know, I subscribe to them. Yeah, that's what they're, Solante Dummies is, I believe, what their channel is called. These coins are the Kimza coins, so I get one of these every year. I'm only missing the 2017 coin. Um, this is the 2014 coin, and I was not there that year, but um, that's sort of my placeholder, I guess, for the 2017. I believe that should be a 2018 coin. They are numbered. Um, 2019 coin. That's the 2021 coin. Nobody was there. It's not numbered because no one was there in person. Um, that was an online deal. I was able to just buy it later because, again, I don't need those credit hours, so I just go to hang out. The 2021 coin, and then this was this year's coin. And then I was able to win one of these from one of the vendors at Kimza. And then these are some just random EMS ones that like my mom's brought back from different um, conferences or uh, wherever she had gone. I'm, I'm going to call them conference because I don't remember where she got them from. Kimza coins have all the same backs. And then this is the one that my mom brought back. 
now that I see this one, this was actually given to me again by the one that worked at the Grand Prairie. And then again, I won this one year at Kimza. I think it was a Plinko game. And I happened to win it. These are sort of my random coins. I call them random because uh, they're too big to fit in the sleeves. I thought this was funny. Again, this is the author that introduced me to um, the Flat Out Bear. Again, her name is Susan Stoker. And then there's her, like, branding and stuff. StokerAces.com is actually her merchandise uh, website. Uh, this has funny backstory just simply because my dad is like, I wouldn't call him obsessed, but he loves Bigfoot. Like a lot. If it's anything Bigfoot related, he will, uh, he'll enjoy it. So, I got a coin because, you know, Bigfoot. Um, I believe this was PFAB again, the Disneyland plaque, complete with the saying, the entrance message that's at all the parks. Alright, or I guess Magic Kingdom. It is quite thick though, and it's just long enough it doesn't fit in the uh, deal. Still in the packaging, I don't even know if they sell these anymore. Um, at Disneyland I bought Pirates of the Caribbean coin, because if it's not, um, if it's not a challenge coin, I collect coins, so it didn't really matter what it was because I wanted it. So it's still sealed, new in package. Um, I wish I would have bought more of these, because now I guess they're either not in existence anymore, or at least very, very, very hard to find. Um, my patches. So, random patches. Uh, ladder 8 is the official Ghostbusters uh, ladder, or Ghostbusters fire station. It's in New York, obviously. So, this is the one that like, was, I think, in the Ghostbuster movie, it is the official Ghostbusters fire station. They have a bunch of merchandise. They do have a coin with this on it, but they're crafty, and you can't purchase their coin through the website. That's where I got this. You have to go visit the fire station or, like, the gift shop there in order to get a coin. So, it's just a patch, so it's kind of a placeholder because I will one day hopefully be able to visit and get myself a coin. The mounted police patch, which again is probably one of my favorite just because it's so pretty. Now we're down to the last of the coins. It, these are the long-awaited coins that I pre-ordered in April. They were only supposed to take six to eight weeks and I didn't get them until just this last Saturday. The wait, I guess we'll say, was worth it, but Still, the wait was forever. Also, I don't know if you could actually call these coins coins because they are gigantic. I don't remember them giving us any sort of dimension for these things, but holy cow, are they huge. Here's the first one. The detailing here is crazy. So, I mean, you can tell, look how big this thing is. I mean, this wouldn't fit in the pouch. And look how big this one is compared to this. I, I have no idea what I'm going to do with such a big coin. So these are super cool for multiple reasons. One, it's just so highly detailed. The only questionable thing I had on this one was the badger at the top looked weird. So I don't know if that's on purpose, but the pictures I looked at, they all show it like that. So I have no idea what's going on there. They're very pretty, and then the back. So each coin, if we're going to call them the, that, has what the sorting hat 
sings at the very beginning in the first book. So that's the Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw. Again, these things are huge. They're very pretty. They're quite hefty. And they, again, very, very detailed. Very, very pretty. And then, again, the Ravenclaw part of the song for the sorting hat. All these Slytherin fans. Again, a gorgeous coin. I mean, this is so very, very pretty. The colors are nice. The details are nice. It's just a very, very pretty coin. And then, of course, last, but certainly not least, is the Gryffindor coin. And again, very pretty, very detailed. And then the back. Okay, well... That was all of the coins. That was a lot, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't know a good way to display them or show them to the camera other than that. Uh, I thought flipping through the book would take too long and it would be too cumbersome trying to mess with that. And to pull them out all individually would be very much time consuming for us all. Um, I... I think I've mentioned that I, I trade coins and I've been collecting them for quite a while. Uh, I, I was only sort of like, we'll say passively uh, collecting them for several years and then it's become more aggressively collecting in the last couple years. Obviously with all the house stuff that's going on, um, I'm gonna have to slow down. I haven't purchased any coins since the pre-order in April. Uh, well, ooh, not true. I, the Miami Dade, the Dare, or, uh, the, uh, Deadpool coin, I did purchase, like, three weeks ago, and that was probably the last coin, and that was right before the disaster stuff happened, so no more frivolously spending money. Of course, I had that pretty well down to, a, to nothing anyway. I was just very randomly, like, ten dollars here, ten dollars there kind of thing so that's got to come to an end at least for now um so i like and challenge coins to disney pins they are very very slippery slope as soon as you get into them um, you're very much need to condense your collection very specific in what you're collecting because if you don't you're going to grab everything and then they're they're expensive just like the pins are um i do have like a album on my phone i take front and back pictures of every coin that i have and then i've got them in a album so i know what coins i've got and what i don't um i am a part of probably too many at this point but we're gonna say at least four maybe five challenge coin like Facebook groups that's where a lot of these are being introduced and then we can trade um, trade or buy you know coins via that way um, yeah so that's been kind of my focus there for a little while but other than that that is all the coins um, I don't really know how I got into them necessarily. Uh, my mom collects them as well and I don't know if maybe it was her that got me into them or or what but I've I've always liked coins. 
I've collected coins for a really long time, so a challenge coin isn't that big of a jump from my normal collecting coins. But otherwise, I believe that is it. Um, the next video is probably going to be my Disney pin collection. I have all the pins that I'm going to buy. Um, again, I was waiting on a shipment prior to the disaster and I had gotten some Hercules pins from Shop Disney because it's still 25th anniversary and I could get some exclusive pins so that was very helpful. Those just came in. I have all my pin boards updated as of right now so that'll probably be the next one but otherwise I'll let you go here because it's going to be a very long video I have a feeling so be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!